Hello and welcome in to the East Show, a weekly interview that will take place this season on EasternHockeyLeague.org. My name is Neil Ravin, the Director of PR and Social Media for the EHL. And our first guest of the season, my co-worker, Mark Kumpel, the league's Director of Hockey Operations. Thank you for joining us this morning, Mark. Thank you, Neil, for having me on. The inaugural show. I'm digging <laughs> it. I have it. So, so this is, as we all know, the fifth season of the EHL, the third year we've had our second division, the Eastern Hockey League premiere this year. So we'll start off with kind of a broad question for you, Mark. What's new this year across the leagues, and what do you think is similar to the four years prior? Well, uh, let's start with the similar. The similar is a, the one thing that uh, I think the EHL does better than any other league out there is if we provide great coaching across the board, both divisions, uh, the EHL division, the premier division, our signature is great coaching. We have uh, uh, coaches that have been around for a long time. Um, they enjoy their work. Uh, they take great pride in helping uh, their athletes and their players uh, improve over time and also uh, the best part is the caveat is the ability that they've had to be able to put kids into the NCAA situations after they move on from the Eastern Hockey League which is you know the main goal why players would want to come to play in the Eastern Hockey League is to and to play juniors is to have that opportunity to have exposure to NCAA college coaches and we do that through our showcases and in particular our coaching our coaches uh, work hard with the kids on the ice but the behind the scenes stuff that these guys do and how they reach out and they they uh, they uh, they leverage their uh, connections and their friendships through the NCAA ranks to help their players move on is phenomenal. The, the, the amount of hours, the, the amount of hours they spend on that is probably the same amount of hours they spend on the ice with the kids, and uh, which is unprecedented. I, you know, the last three years, I believe we've been hitting over 140 uh, players moving out of the EHL into the NCAA situation, actually gone on and played, and uh, are on rosters currently now throughout the throughout the college ranks. So, I would say that's the, the one consistent thing, but it's also our strength of our league. Uh, how, how good our coaching is and how hard they work at it. Uh, uh, what's new? Well, across the two divisions, uh, you know, we, we had uh, build a little bit and we have eight new teams throughout, uh, uh, you know, across the two divisions. We added Wilkes-Barre Scranton, um, which is actually coming back to our league after a couple of year hiatus. Uh, then we had the New York Bobcat Royals, which uh, also is coming back to our league. They, they were with us a couple of years ago and uh, uh, had a little hiccup, and they're back, and uh, they're playing hard. And uh, the brand new one came out of nowhere was the New Hampshire Avalanche, and they they went out to Mario Martinello, who was a veteran of our league years ago, moved on, bought a rink up there in Hooks of New Hampshire, the ice den, and... Uh, uh, wanted back in, and he liked the what we've done as in the past as a league, he, and he, he was very intelligent. He hired a veteran coach, uh, uh, Chris Sorella. So I look at that team there as, uh, with Mario's history and his abilities, and and Chris Sorella's history and abilities. That's like the double-headed dragon up there, and uh, you know, boy, it, that's a formidable pair that out there in the recruiting scene, and also uh, leveraging their, their contacts in the NCAA to help their players. So, and then, uh, the kind of, a, 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 a it's a new team. It's a new name is, is the Connecticut Rough Riders. It's an old team that, uh, they, uh, they moved, uh, the name, uh, Connecticut Oils up the street to Hamden, Connecticut. So I guess that would be our new team. The Connecticut Rough Riders was the incumbent, uh, and they just took on the name, the Rough Riders because of the affiliation that they have with the USHL. Um, and the, uh, I would say the, the new team, Connecticut Oils, uh, the intelligence of uh, Ryan Hughes, was the owner, he hired Carl Linden, who came from the NCAA college ranks. And uh, he's also a uh, Swedish descent and is uh, a, a, a different style of coaching and exposure for the players. And uh, I think that's done very well at the uh, league division, or excuse me, at the premier division. Uh, we've added Central Penn Panthers. Uh, that's uh, out in, out in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, Ray Ferry owns that, that team. I'm very familiar with Ray. I've known him for years. Uh, that that general area was a proving ground and actually a, a recruiting ground for myself when I was with the Walpole Express. We'd end up with two or three excellent players uh, each year out of that program. So I expect good things out of them. 
the New Jersey Wildcats, a longstanding program in, in uh, Tier 3 Junior Hockey, has joined us. Uh, the uh, same with the uh, New Jersey Renegades. Cliff Graziano does, does a great job down there. And uh, the new one that uh, came out of nowhere was New Jersey 87. And uh, Adam Hooley is a bright young coach. He also has some great contacts through colleges and through the uh, North American Hockey League. And uh, he's done a great job. In fact, uh, that's one of my favorite teams in, in, in that division. They do, a, they do a tremendous job both on and off the ice. So I guess that's what's new, Neil. That's, that's a lot. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but again, if you, if you listen to what I was saying, it's the strength of, of our league and the strength of those teams and, and all of our teams is our coaching. Yep. And the only other one that's even out there also, a brand new team in the Seahawks down on the Cape. And just a little plug for everyone that we will be on the cover of the USA Junior Hockey Magazine for the month of November, focusing on all these new teams. So make sure to grab a copy of that magazine next month. And just carrying on with our conversation, Mark, of all the new teams, of all the teams returning, has there been one team or a coach that has really impressed you through the first two months of the season? Well, uh, you caught me. Uh, I, I miss Bill Zanaboni down there. He's uh, actually done a great job. Bill Bill comes to us from a different league out west. He was coaching out in the Minnesota, Wisconsin area, uh, which was interesting because when he did come this way, he he basically uh, I call it he had a different pond to fish in for his players. And uh, uh, Warren Megan and uh, Coach Sherman down there and uh, Hyannis, the two owners. Uh, have a beautiful facility to play out of, and they uh, they have the ability to build players and uh, down there, and they brought in players from uh, different parts of the country, which is a great exposure for our league out west. Uh, you know that we exist and why we exist, and and Bill Zanaboni is a bright young coach. He he listens. He's he's eager to learn, and, and uh, he already possesses a ton of knowledge. But uh, I kind of have three favorite teams. You know, I I, I don't have a particular one. Um, I'll, let's start with the New England Wolves. Uh, I've watched them now for a couple of years when they first entered our league. I think it was four years ago they got back, they got into our league. And uh, I really think that uh, each year they've grown. Uh, again, uh, Steve Jacobs is the owner and, and has coached the team in the past. And he's passed the torch on to a bright young coach, Andrew Trimble, who uh, I think uh, had uh, cut his teeth last year in the uh, elite division and has moved right up into our top division um, and, and done a great job. He's a, he's a nurturing coach. He, he teaches. He's very conscientious about uh, the league and its brand and also the New England Wolves brand. And I, I've seen an improvement. He, he's uh, recruited some young players that I think have bright futures, and uh, they're fun to watch. Um, the other team I would have to say would be the Connecticut Oilers, which was formerly in, in – uh, down in Norwalk, but is up at hand in Connecticut now, and that's the team I mentioned uh, is coached by Carl Linden. Um, they were they started out with uh, some shy numbers on the roster, which I appreciate. It's a tough thing to to, to say that, but um, I, I love the dedication of the team, saying, "Hey, look, we want to make sure we have the right players in place, not just a bunch of players." So they've been patient. Um, they're building their team as they go along here. They're they're hovering right around 500. Uh, I believe in Carl uh, and Pete McLean, the two coaches down there. Uh, I believe that they they have everybody's best interests at heart, especially the, their own players. They're very uh, protective and um, very nurturing of them. So uh, I enjoy watching them play. He has a, the, a little bit of that European style that uh, he uses out there, and uh, which is puck con puck control, puck possession, and uh, I think that's. Uh, it, what the hockey is now and, and what the NCAA coaches want to see. They want to see the, the players being able to make plays and possess the puck. So I would have to say they're one of my favorites. And, the, and then uh, I definitely have to give uh, snaps uh, to and kudos to the New Jersey 87s. Um, you know, the, they, they opened their doors for the first time this year and uh, they hit the ground running. They, uh, you know, for a team that, uh, uh, hadn't been in business before they they crossed the t's dot their eyes and the, on the business side of it and on the ice boy i just watched their team a, a week ago in uh, brewster at our showcase uh they're they're using some high-end tactics uh, and they're, they're bringing it to the development division of our, our league and i think that they're going to uh they're going to be a force to be reckoned with through this through the next couple of years so yeah uh, those are my three <laughs> so there you've talked about coaches and teams now i guess 
you know, we, we have so many players between the two divisions. Has there been one player in particular that has really stood out for you? Yeah, and, you know, I didn't know if I really knew this before this past weekend, but uh, I really like the kid Whitman down for the, the revolution. Um, he played this past weekend in the uh, all-star game that we put together where we played the University of Mass Boston. Um, he's a good-sized kid. Uh, he's been with the revolution for a number of years. I think he's going at this. It might be his second or third year. In each year, uh, he he's crept up into the spotlight, so to speak. And uh, this past weekend, uh, we had a game against UMass Boston. And when I first stepped on the ice, uh, I looked at our team versus their team. And uh, their team is, it had 22, 23-year-old men on it. We had, uh, I think our oldest player was just turned 20. Um, and, and, you know, we were probably inch for inch the same height. But their maturity, the body maturity, they were they were young men versus uh, some some old boys, so to speak. And uh, <clears throat> and I watched how th uh, he played. He played uh, the consummate uh, uh, power forward style um, in that game. And you know he had another. He played on a line with Peters from Walpole, who I look at as a as a, a very very strong east to west player, a good playmaker, makes everybody around him better. Um, and he played, uh, I think Whitman played on the wing there, and he was the perfect complement to that. We had uh, Peters controlling the puck east to west, and then Whitman was going north to south and pushing his way and took the puck in the net a couple of times, drove, drove the post, uh, did a lot of great things. Uh, you know, to me, uh, I, I watched that, and he's been well-developed down there with John Roger, uh and, and uh, Keith Primu had him, I think, originally, and, and John Roger uh, picked up the torch and, and run with him. And I just really was enamored by uh, how well he's improved. He's got good size. He's, he's the prototypical uh, NCAA uh, D1 slash D3 player that uh, somebody I think will take a chance on. So I, I kind of fell in love with him this week. Not love with him, but at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really, wow. I, that's the type of player I want on my team. And, you know, again, like I say, he made Peters better and Peters made him better. It was a good compliment. So maybe it was a little bit of both things, yeah. but – uh, I enjoyed watching him, and you know, you look at his team's record down there. Currently, they're the only undefeated team in our league, and uh, uh, he's uh, leading the charge down there. So I think maybe I picked the right guy. It's not too hard to pick, <laughs> pick the best player. Well, you know, so. it's true though. Through it's 29 points in the first 14 games, he's only been held off the score sheet three total times, but he's also got four game-winning goals. So he's been a key guy for the Revolution to lean on. And yeah. we'll end this with one last question, Mark, just to kind of put a bow on the first edition of the e-show we put came out with a story this past week that showed the ehl by the numbers the first 100 games of the season and 29 or 29 percent of those games were decided by a single goal what is your main takeaway from that stat well you know it there's a lot of ways to look at that neil you know this is a strange year in, in tier three hockey uh junior hockey with a uh, number of teams uh expanded again and so having a full roster is difficult so you know some teams uh, uh have played short i mentioned the kinetic Royals is one that i think they've had uh 16 17 players uh, on the bench most of the year they've they've added some players and they've added their right players as they as they progress through the year and i'm sure they'll continue um you know so you look at that and it tells me that well we have a lot of good hockey teams or uh, anybody could win in any given night, I guess is the, the thing. You look at the the actual standings, we have nine teams that are over 500 points wise, which is probably about right. So you can't have everybody over. Somebody has to be in last place. Somebody has to be in first place. Um, and if you look at the, the, the record of uh, like they may be a Wilkes-Barre Scranton, uh, you know, they've, they struggle a little bit, but they also were short on numbers and, uh, you know, they, they would lose one, one or two goal games uh, throughout the, the plus far through the season. And, and what that tells me is if they had those two extra players that they'd throw them over the top, they wouldn't get tied in the third and the game gets stretched out on them, you know? Um, so I guess uh, the, the word is parody. You know, you could, somebody will argue different, but I look at it from the, the, the practical side, from uh, numbers on the bench, uh, the right players on the bench, um, and uh, the ability to have a game every single night that means something uh, all the way into the third period, right to the end of the final buzzer. And to me, that's what our 
target audience is looking for, which is the, the uh, college coaches. And I think they come out and they appreciate the effort our coaches put in uh, on coaching the players, but they also look at our players and say, wow, the, you know, these kids can come and play at my school. And, and ultimately, that's what we're doing. Yep. And we saw that firsthand at the first showcase of the season, a great crowd of college coaches and scouts that were there. So thank you, Mark, for joining us for the first edition of the E-Show. We're going to keep doing these throughout the season with league officials and GMs, head coaches, players throughout the year. So be sure to keep an eye on easternhockeyleague.org for all the latest news and updates throughout this fifth season of the Eastern Hockey League. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Neil.